Technology is rapidly changing and the possibilities are staggering. The implications are potentially dangerous, troubling, and threatening. Let's see what the Bible has to say about that. Hey everybody, welcome to our podcast. I encourage you to like, subscribe, and share what we're going to talk about today. It's going to be fascinating. We're glad to have Hunter with us today. Hunter is our uh, director of technology here at Vertical Church. And so he has his hands in a lot of tech, which is helpful for us, uh, from video to audio to computer. So uh, very fitting that we would bring him in, of course, today. He's a little bit more knowledgeable than we are on some tech subjects. Yes. Kind of refers to us as cavemen for Uh that reason. I was going to say, that is the running joke. It is. I set this podcast studio up and these two cavemen run it. And right. they do a great job. Yes, we do. True. So we covered a related topic seven months ago. It was called How the Church Should Respond to Changing Technology. Yeah. And uh, that was seven months ago. Yeah. <laughs> a lot has happened in seven months. Yeah. So a lot's happening uh, right now in the technology field. And so we're going to attempt to deal with that today. Some of the things that are currently on the ground and being used, and it's happening quickly. Uh, a lot of changes taking place. The people aren't even sure quite how to respond to it all yet. Yep. Uh, and the church, of course, is some are aware and are attempting to uh, figure out what this means for us as well as the church. There's a lot of potential for some of it. Uh, there's some threat involved with some of it, and I think it's important that we look at all that today. So we're we'll looking at three or four different, or four or five, I think, maybe topics today, technology issues that are out there, and asking, okay, what are they? Yeah. What's the potential for each? How could yeah. this be used for the kingdom's sake? Um, is there a danger related to these? We'll ask that question. And then what does the Bible have to say about this area? I think that's fair mm-hmm, for, for all sure. of these. So, because we are getting to parts of the Bible. I mean, not parts of the Bible. We're getting to a point in our modern day life that people back in the day would have no idea even imagine the yeah. technology is happening well, today. Well, exactly. I mean, you could almost say that a year ago. Oh, yes. We wouldn't have even yeah. envisioned some of the things that are now in the forefront. Seven months ago, we yeah. wouldn't have, we didn't know these things. They yeah. weren't out True. yet. True. So, but biblical truths are biblical truths, and it, exactly. that stands the test of time yeah, exactly. always. There is, there is a place where we say we stand here. Yes. And, yeah. Uh, and there is a place that we must understand and attempt to view what's changing by where we stand, mm-hmm. <laughs> not change where we stand by what's happening out there. Absolutely. So, yes. That's good. That's good. All righty. So, well, for the first topic that we're going to talk about, it is this right here. It's called chat G P T. So Which, this is like, if for new. some reason you look at anything online, people say it so fast. Everyone's like chat GPT, chat GPT. And yeah. I thought it was chat G B G B T for yeah. a while. Chat G P T. A week ago, I hadn't even heard of this. Yeah, yeah. and it stands for Chat Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. Still doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know what any of that <laughs> chat means. GPT. So, so then the question is, what is Chat GPT? Would you like to answer that for us? Both yeah, of I mean, I, of y'all? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll answer it uh, within so much of like the the bleeding on the front side of technology. Um, again, it's standing for a Chat Generative pre-trained transformer means it is an application that uses AI, mm-hmm. artificial intelligence. Um, I'm not going to try to speak way too heavy into the tech, so yeah. this will be easy to follow. <laughs> it's yeah. the goal. And so essentially what it's doing is because it's a, it's, it's just a program, um, it can scour the entire internet yeah. in a matter of seconds and find any information in seconds yeah. and then give it to you in a way that's easy for you to understand. In so seconds. yeah, in <laughs> seconds. And so, and you, if you think about it, you're like, well, that sounds a lot like what Google is. Yes and no. So if you Google, uh, what is the weather like in Dallas, Texas, then it will give you several links, and you can click to those links and find the weather. Yeah. If you ask Chat GPT, you can say, um, what is the weather like in Dallas, Texas, and what's a fun activity today? It will then type out in a very conversational sense. Yeah. It'll be like, well, in Dallas, Texas, the weather is 87 degrees. Not right now. It'd be like in Dallas, Texas, the weather is like 30 degrees, Uh. feels like 20 degrees. (laughs) Uh, A great activity is this coffee shop is right here. Yeah. And all of that. So this is very much of a conversational chat bot is Mm -hmm. what they call it. 
and you can gather information in that sense. Yeah. So it's it's based in artificial intelligence. In other words, it's it's performing an intelligent function. Yes. Yeah. Um, artificially. That we yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that we might have normally or would have normally done ourselves. Yes. I would have click, 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 yeah. gather information, put it together. Yes. But it's it's even more than that from what I've seen. It also is able to take very complex yeah. processes oh, yes. and put them down into uh just a minute yeah, of activity. Yeah. A paragraph read, if you it, want It to. is It is uh, the most recent, quick, user-friendly form of artificial intelligence. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. So chat bot, uh, short for robot. Yes. It's a robotic app, basically, that's doing some thinking for you, if we're trying yeah. to put this into ultimate user-friendly terms. So yeah. it's able to do work for me that I normally would have done. Right? Correct. Yeah. So uh, one of the ways I saw it explained was like, okay, so me personally, I come from graduating high school in 1981 and Mm -hmm. and using, uh, if we did a research paper, that meant, okay, you're going to have to go to the library library. and get your typewriter out. A physical library where I use the card catalog to go find resources of some books that might, that hopefully were in that library. I didn't have to go to another library. That's terrible. uh, Drive across town to another library to find another card catalog to hopefully find the books I needed on the shelf and come home. And then I would physically write note cards and then I would turn those into my teacher. She would approve those and I would write my research paper rough draft, turn that in, make sure I reference all my note cards and then final draft, turn that in. Then I'll get a grade. That was the process. But with artificial intelligent bots like oh. this, I can say, write me uh, this essay about yeah, this. Please. For me, back in the day, it's 1981. I'm writing a research paper on solar energy. So, oh, wow. So oh. today, uh, you could say, uh, uh, hey, write me a, a, a research paper, uh, 10 pages in length. In MLA on, format. <laughs> MLA yeah. format on the benefits of solar, or using solar energy, along with five applications. And then, and that's the thing. You could say, "Give me a paragraph," or "Give me a ten-page essay." It's going to give you both of those in a well, thorough, thought-out way. Yeah, that's, that's what's insanity. crazy. And so, I ask it to do that, and it's not going to go away for two weeks and come back. Yeah. It's no, going to come back within go a minute. Yeah. yeah, you're going to watch it, type it all out in front of you in, in real like, time, in fast words per minute. And so, I'm asking again. The computer now, it's not just giving me. Google sites, it's giving me the product. The, the thing. Yes. Yeah. I'm getting, I want a high school research paper yeah. in MLA format, 10 pages long, uh, double space, whatever I want to say, yeah. you know, yeah. and then it, it does that for me. So it's, it's using artificial intelligence to create things. This is, this is a new day all of a sudden. It's wild, which really just shows the difference in uh, learning styles. Yeah. And, Man, I'm not saying that like no one needs to learn how to write research papers, but the whole entire point of like cramming down, here's how you format this and here's how you do this, yeah. or even here's how you gather information is so different yeah. because uh, yes, the, the cheating way to do it in school would be, oh, you, you read um, Huckleberry Finn and you need to write a research paper about it. Well, you could go to chat GPT and say, I need to write a 10 page research paper. And it would do that in seconds. Yeah. You didn't retain any knowledge right. through it. You learned how to do that, but yeah. you didn't retain any knowledge. Yeah. Well, we live in a different age. It used to be that the age was about trying to acquire knowledge, but now we have information overload. Too yeah. Much. yeah. It's yeah. it's way too much to you, even you try to learn as an obtain. Right. You can learn how to get it, but to obtain all of that? Yeah, which is the greater education really today for a lot of people is how do I get the information? How do yes. I get the knowledge? So, yes. But- this chat GPT, these AI, this, these bots can do more than that. They even can do things like if I said, hey, put together a business proposal along with social media outlet uh, posts and uh, create artwork for me for a brochure and along with a voiceover by a female voice that I can use for TV publication and then yeah, it's done. done. A couple, couple different applications is what you'd have to use for all that stuff, but it's yeah. all but it's, accessible. It's, done. it's all right there. Yeah, but this and, is, it's, and it's free for you to use. That's the weirdest thing. Yeah. You're not like, okay, let me let me pay a thousand dollars per ten words 
Yeah. Yeah. It's can, no longer, you know, I need to go find a marketing firm who can help promote yeah. my business. No, you simply get one of these chat bots, one of these app type in app the situation. You <laughs> say, uh, I want to reach uh, a market in the South in Texas yeah, for, for this users demographic of, in this way. Yeah. And then it creates all of that for me. Yeah. I've had my social media post. I have the brochure. I have the, uh, the emails to send and they all yep. sound like I would sound yeah. in them. Yep. I can I can ask it to create all of that. That's just some crazy. I, I can't wrap my mind around what all the implications of that yeah. are yet. Yeah, uh, it's it's so new. Um, so, but I could see where it's like, okay, this is interesting because now in high school, a student finds this out, and a teacher says, "Hey, I need you to write a ten page essay." Done. Okay, <laughs> you're right. Like, turn it in like right now. Yeah, or, yeah, I yeah. can. Okay, well, this changes the game. What it about does. what about research? What yeah. about the process? Yeah. What about the work put into it? it? It's all different. Goes to show everything is changing. Needs to change to yeah. where people um, aren't just wasting. You're not. Gonna, you're not. Gonna, <laughs> I'm saying wasting time in the sense of go write this paper. It's due in two weeks. Okay, I'll spend five seconds typing this in. Yeah. And then yeah. Here you go. Exactly. Yeah. But, yeah but, I mean, some people even saying, "Okay, Google is dead now." Effectively, yeah. Google looking for information on Google. Slow. Once you have this, <laughs> yeah, Google seems like archaic yeah. at this point. See? Yeah. Because you you gave me information, but I got to figure out which one I want to use. Yeah, exactly. And I had now, to use my brain. And then after that, that you have to find the information and learn how to actually like write it into an essay. <laughs> yeah. So, exactly. Uh, you know, and I, and I've, I, of course, I'm looking at what Christian organizations and how does the church use this? Yeah. Is it? Is this of the devil? What is all of yeah. this stuff? Because I think, Whenever people hear this stuff, instantly they're like, that is evil. Yes, yes. Yeah. exactly. Anything that people don't understand that's technology instantly yeah. somehow is equated to the devil. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it, and so I, I come across websites. I'm looking for ones I trust. Like I, I trust the, the Gospel Coalition website. I, yeah. I like their stuff. I, I wouldn't say everything that they put out is yeah, always not, awesome. Exactly. I, I'm but with they you have on, solid stuff. I'm with you on that. I, I, I shouldn't say I'm looking for ones that I totally support here that. as as the person who does not use that site at all give me a quick synopsis of even what they are just briefly christian organization that puts out news articles on just about any topic you can find if you if you went it's essentially like a fox news like a cnn like a whatever it's all That's these cool. writers come together and write articles on um different topics nice. yes yeah. so for example i was reading one of the articles that they had put together about this whole thing about chat gpt and ai algorithms mm-hmm. and this kind of thing and they said they asked the ai to explain the difference between armenianism and calvinism so that's mm-hmm. a big deal uh debated for a long time within the church yeah. these two different views and the ai come up with a brief paragraph that accurately explained the difference between armenianism and calvinism it's crazy just by saying just in, a, in just a moment and so, like, type and then, like, it solved all debates. <laughs> yeah, it changes everything. And then, and then they also said that they asked that they asked the Chat GPT to explain the gospel. Okay, let's see where yeah. this is headed. Because, yeah. you know, behind the scenes, you got to think. Okay, how does it know where to look? How does it know what to yeah. say? What's is there someone the defining the parameters? What's yeah. happening here? Uh, here is exactly what they said that the AI gave them. It said, the gospel is the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ. God loves us so much that he sent his only son, Jesus, to come down to earth, die on a cross for our sins. Through faith in Jesus' death and resurrection, we can be forgiven of our sins and receive eternal life. This is the hope we have when we accept him as Lord and Savior and eternity with him in heaven. And here's the crazy thing. like It's because it's able to scour the entire internet. That means from all words that are on the internet scouring the entire bible in seconds Every, yeah. it also means that all famous popular preachers yeah, exactly. that have messages yeah. sermons opinions yeah. it's gathering all of that and quickly is just saying okay here's what the gospel is yeah you know what i don't understand is i mean that was a great description yeah but i know not all the descriptions out there are good they're exactly some, not not good versions yeah. of, of how people explain the gospel. Yeah, exactly. How did it come up with good? Yeah. How did it know the parameters? Yeah. How did it not have a, a Mormon gospel presentation? Yeah. Or, or have... Catholic. Yeah, I, exactly. How did it not do that? I don't, I don't understand that. Yeah. I, I guess that's what we'll have to still learn. I don't yeah. know what the parameters are, how that's set up. Yeah. What was fascinating is at the end of the article I was reading, they said that 90% of the article was actually written by chatbot. Uh. Wow. Okay. This is really That's crazy. Yeah. Crazy. I don't yeah. even know. Yeah. I don't even know what to think about yeah. all of that yet. Yeah. But yeah. it's this idea that processes that used to take time 
and energy and diligence no longer are that way. I yeah. think, is that bad? It, well, is that good? It still requires time. It still requires diligence. It's just the amount of time, the amount of diligence has changed. The upfront time and diligence, though, that's out the window. Yes. That's yes. out the but, window. And you certainly can't discard it just because of that, because you're like, so, you could say, well, before we had microwave ovens, food used to take time. Yeah, and exactly. Preparing exactly. a meal was a process. Yeah, you everyone who just, despises Chad GPT, like, Take away your ovens, take away your microwaves, and like, you're not, you can't <laughs> or, have or go back further, grow your own food, yeah, and exactly. harvest your own food, and store yeah. your own food, and prepare your own meals, all of that. So we can't say, well, just because it reduces time that it's a bad thing. Yeah. Correct. You know, maybe there's some other implications we need to consider here, mm-hmm. but uh, again, the, the ramifications of all of this seem maybe bigger than what we know in this yeah. moment. It's oh, so crazy. quickly sure. developing, yeah. but uh, some... Christian organizations and churches are beginning to explore what all of this potentially means. Yeah. Well, I mean, I even think about it too is like uh, someone who, I'm going to say me, who's on staff, who uh, doesn't have an insane amount of uh, biblical knowledge, but I want to be able to like extend this to the church through social media or through any form of tech. Well, I can then go to chat GPT, find out whatever kind of content I want to produce, even if it's like, Hey, help me, uh, or like write a social media post about the, the gospel of Mark. Then it yeah. can quickly not give a 10 page essay, a social media thing. Yeah. And then I can then ask for different versions of that. And then me myself, I can just kind of check and verify each one. And then in a matter of like, you know, 10 minutes, I have like 10 different captions or posts yeah. or anything like that yeah. and right. i can use it as that it's just crazy yeah so it has implications beyond this as well because uh, the you're telling me that you have you know someone who who used it yeah. and asked you to do some very interesting yeah. things yeah i mean they're, like for example they said write write me a worship song uh in the key of g and boom just like that here's a, here's a theologically sound an christian intro chorus worship song. verse yep in the key of g with chords all that stuff. They're and it like, wasn't one that was already produced no, somewhere. It, it, was, it was fresh. It was a fresh new one. That's insane. I mean, it's pulling from other things and <laughs> yes. other, you know, other researches, but it's new essentially. And and I follow a guy on uh, Twitter, I think it was, and he he's a pastor and he typed in there, type, you know, write me a sermon uh, that uh, over this topic or whatever. Boom, sermon. Summarize the sermon in three points. Uh, and in a, what's it called, where it all starts with the same letter? Oh. Alliteration. And it did that. Boom, boom, boom. Just wow. like that. Over that same sermon that was just typed. And so, again, it's cool things, but at the same time, you have the the lack, I would say the lack of ownership on the front end of yes. things. You yeah, know? yeah. Well, let's talk about the positives. Yeah. Let's do all of this. Let's talk about the positives. Yeah. Let's talk about potential drawbacks. And then let's, if there's something the Bible has to say about it, let's yeah, talk exactly. about it. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Uh, positives. What are some positives about this kind of technology? The positive is that anything is at your fingertips and you're seconds away from any information you need to gather. Yeah. Whether you are skilled in it or not. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Sure. You could say, you, show me how to, uh, or explain how I should change out this filter in my car. Yeah. Or in it, words, it has it for you. And you know, you could, YouTube, but you got to yeah. watch a six minute video and oh, that's going to take forever. But it's just, and yeah, five seconds. Here's a little uh, explanation why. You know, yeah, yeah. Or, or or create uh create three pieces of art I can hang in my contemporary living room. Yeah, yeah. or even like uh I still don't even understand how to write haikus. I just know it's so cool if it turns <laughs> into a haiku. Yeah, but like you could be like, yeah. give me a very cool biblical haiku, and Done. they would. It's there, like, it would you happen. have it as as yeah whatever you use for graphic art now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's the thing is like th- there are so many crazy opportunities to use all that stuff in the church. Yeah. And again, like we've said, then be theologically sound or at yes. least be yeah. a, Hey, here's like 80% of the work and you can edit and revise and do however you want. That's cool. I don't know if that's the way we should go. I think <laughs> yeah. it's a cool thing. Yeah. And I'm not suggesting we do this, but I could see where someone could say, Hey, write a 13 week Bible study yeah. of the book of Philippians that will help me not have anxiety and I want it designed uh, for young parents. That's incredible. Yeah. Like it, it's just, and 
What's so good is it gives everyone no excuse, though. That's the best part. Because some people are like, you know, I really want to have a Bible study. I just don't know what to talk about. Yeah. In, in yeah. a matter yeah. of two seconds, it's all right there spelled out of like, here's how you can sit down. Here's biblical verses you can refer to yeah. and talk to some people yeah. about this. Yeah. Or, or help me uh, uh, write an outreach program that I can use yeah. to reach people who live in an affluent neighborhood in my area. And yeah. it comes back. Yeah. That's just weird. It's wild. That, yeah. that is AI. That's artificial intelligence. It's, yeah. it's something that we have to deal with because it's here. You can yeah, you exactly. can attempt to say, no, 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 but yeah. it, it's here. Yeah. Uh, so that's interesting. It's just it's just fascinating. Positives, yeah. any other positives you can think of? Yeah, those are some really good positives. That's yeah. the thing. At least within the church, for sure. Yeah, exactly. There's all kind of other potentials. Well, and that's, that's the stuff. It's like, it's positive but at the same time, I do believe there are drawbacks to that. Okay, because well, let's talk the, about that. I think the main drawback is is uh, a total lack of actual buy-in. You're giving a pass to whoever wants to say whatever, teach whatever, do whatever. You know, oh well, this is a theologically sound, all that kind of. You know, yeah. There's anyone, no checks and balances at that point. Yeah. Like someone could type something into Chat GPT, it could accidentally reference something wrong, and all of a sudden, someone's like. This is a foundation of my life now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it, I think it's a it's a false false sense of how like we are supposed to function. And yeah. I think it creates a uh, it can create a dependence on uh, if we were if we became dependent on finding out things in life by Chat GPT. Yeah, then you're you're essentially done for as a human. It seems like you know yeah. if your dependence is entirely on another artificial brain. Yes. And if you're only just having yourself as a copycat of that, yeah, if you're exactly. only just a megaphone for chat GPT, well, yeah. at the end of the day, like we said, it is artificial yeah. intelligence. Exactly. Yeah. There is nothing about that that's like <sighs> true intelligence. Yeah. And then the second someone uh, will question something about it or say mm-hmm. like, hey, well, that was really interesting how you mentioned that. Yeah. Can and you explain like, anything ah, else yeah, further? Yeah, and you're like, know. that's a great yeah, question for exactly. chat GPT. Then yeah. <laughs> you're not exactly. really being a great mentor. Well, yeah. yeah, you've turned your brain off at that point. Yeah, you've turned your you've turned your heart off at that point. And yes, it does. I could see where it promotes laziness. Yes, uh, especially in ministry because yes, part of the work of ministry is is doing the work in the word, yeah. uh, doing exactly. the work in interaction with other people, yes. doing the yeah. work in counseling and developing relationships. Uh, that's work. And, and and the thing is, people can tell whenever you're actively trying. To, to do work. They can feel the heart yeah. in your message and they can feel when the heart's not in the message. Yeah. It is so much of a thing that's hard to uh, hard to lie about. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I guess that's what I was thinking is maybe the, the bigger drawbacks are maybe from, from what I could see at least is I am, I'm promoting ministry then. If I use this, then ministry is really just more of an information dump. I went out right. and gained this information and I'm just giving it to you. Uh, ministry is meant to be from a life. It's meant to be from my life to another life. And so truth should be formed in me and come yeah. out of me And after it has transformed me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the more credible people in ministry are the ones that we see their life and we know their life. Yes. And when exactly. you hear a message come out of them, you believe because of what you know about them. Yeah. Exactly. Not just because they have you know, four degrees or yeah. because they have X many followers yeah. in, on social media or any of that. Or how many computers running chat GPT. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anybody can spit out information, but yes. it's, it's life to life. The other thing I think that, that it kind of just hits me in our discussion here is that um, if chat GPT and these AI bots are pulling information from what already exists, then I'm not getting truth from the place that truth exists exactly <laughs> from god himself yeah. exactly and that's really what ministry is meant to be it's meant to be god pouring himself into me and me being transformed and then me giving to others i think uh you know in john he says and the word became flesh and dwelt among us the, the heart of god the the very communication of God's heart became flesh and blood and it dwelt among us. He didn't just yeah. send us a, a banner in the sky. He didn't yep. just send us a, a prescribed. He didn't just send us chat GPT. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, it was a joke, but like that yeah. is, that's, that's yeah. accurate to say though, because now we've gotten to where because of this, there's, there is no like 
hold on, let me read the entire Bible and spend all this time to fully understand (laughs) everything. You can quickly get references to everything. But then again, that's just being like, it's, it's so I'm saying it's chat GPT in me. And, yeah. Yeah. and then God is, God is not in you yeah, for that. And if, exactly. like, it needs to be like you mentioned God, God's love in you, that relationship yeah. in you, then flowing out. That yeah, way. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, and it certainly I get a church ministry. That's what I think we're talking about mostly mm-hmm. today. There's this sense of which we're called to be like Paul said to the young pastor, Timothy, you know, Hey, be diligent to present yourself yes. uh, approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed. You're rightly dividing the word of truth. So yep. uh, there's some work in that. There's diligence in that. There's time. There's prayer. There's energy. There's discussion that goes into all of that. And, and you have to put in the work. Yes. Yeah. You can't just can't just Google it or chat GPT it yeah. you know, to get what you need. You yeah. can't just download the information and have it. It has to become you, and then it has to come out of you. So. And that's a, the other big thing that I think is a drawback is uh, you kind of have to ask the question: of Does does this grow you? Does does yeah. having just the answer grow you rather than having to work in order to get the answer? It's like yep. if you know you went to the gym and it's like there's this new cool thing you don't have to work out anymore. They just put <laughs> muscles right oh. on you. All, All the stuff that came out in like early 2000s, they're like, just sit on this chair and you'll get yeah. an eight it, pack it of abs. Work. Yeah, it will work you out. It's like, no, it, it's, you know, that's what the Bible does. The Romans 12 too, the renewing of your mind, right? Yeah. It's, it's changing because of the work that you're putting in as well. You know, it's not yeah. just, uh, Oh, I just have the answers and I'll just say the answers. But instead it's a it's a relationship, it's a growth, it's change, yeah. it's you know, yeah. yep. It's good. All those things. All right. Well, that's a lot. And and that's yeah. not future to come. That no, is happening now. right now. It's, it is active and present yeah. and and shaping culture as we know it. There's yeah. probably more that has been uh shaped by a, an AI bot than you realize. Oh, for yeah. sure. And I would guess right now, probably you've already scrolled out of this video and you've tried to look it up yourself. And now you're back on for this next point. Yeah. Welcome back. Uh, which we're going to be covering augmented reality. All right. Augmented reality. That sounds like so future. Yeah. But. It sounds like crazy 2080. But yeah. Nope. Here we it's are. Right 2022. Now. Yes. Augmented reality. What is augmented reality? Well, I mean, if we keep going... Uh, maybe one day we'll have the podcast. We'll just be in this person's living room. It's just yeah. 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 how's it going? Yeah. Exactly. This is the augmented. Yeah. Yeah. Shake my hand just like this. <laughs> um, yeah. So kind of like I just joked about. Um, normally there are two different ways you hear this said. There's augmented reality or virtual reality. Um, augmented reality is the type to where you can still see uh, your actual reality, what's going around. Yeah. So like right now we can still see our podcast studio. But if we wanted to use aspect of uh, augmented reality, we can use apps like Amazon or Ikea is using this. And if we wanted to get a cool uh, centerpiece for this table, well, then I could uh, go on my phone, find it on Amazon or Ikea. And then they normally have a button that says, like, see what this looks like in my room. You press it. And on most modern phones, they have this capability. And... You, it scans the room and then understands the dimensions, uh, dimensions of the room, dimensions of the piece you want to get, and it will perfectly place it right there on the table, and you can see it from all different aspects. You can see if you're closer to it or further away from it. Um, as a, a tech person, the greatest way to do this that every homeowner will use is when the, you want to buy a new TV and you wonder what does a 55-inch TV, what does a 65 or a 75-inch TV look like? Yeah. You can do all that, put it on your wall, and see how big that TV is. And 9 out of 10 times, you'll always want the bigger TV. But yeah. you, it's always more expensive. Yeah, true. But that's how it works. So that's yeah. available on some cell phones, some apps. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I guess you could use an iPad or some other device. Yeah. Uh, there's some limited use of glasses today where some of that's available. Yeah, yeah. On high end, uh, where you put a pair of glasses on and you see your reality, but you see it augmented, added to yep. by whatever device you choose to add to it. Yep. Right? Yeah. So, so uh, what are the positives to augmented? Um, yeah. Positives, like we talked about for your everyday use, is anytime you want to buy something that is yeah. a little bit more money or you're trying to make sure... You have the right dimensions of it. You can literally yeah. see what it looks like in your space right yeah. there before you go buy it. 
Yeah. Which I know for the longest time was a drawback. Everyone's like, I don't want to buy it on Amazon. Like, I don't know what it looks like. Yeah. Well, surprise, you can see what it looks like in your house yes. right there. Yeah. yeah. I could see some real positives within the church uh, for some of this. I could see where someone said, hey, I want to get some sense of how tall Goliath really was. I want to show my kids or my That's class. Awesome. I want to yeah. show them what that looks like. Okay, well, great. Use this augmented reality app. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Say so there was one. Yeah. Uh, and it showed Goliath. Well, you could hold it up in your room and get a sense for how tall Goliath was. His head's like sticking through yeah, the ceiling. Like 30. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you say, I want to see how short Zacchaeus was. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, here's here's Zacchaeus in your room in scale. Or I, I want to see what the vision that Ezekiel had in, yeah. in chapter one of Ezekiel. I want to see that. Yeah. Okay. Well, what, cool. How many millions of eyes look like? Yeah. Around. And all the yeah. wheels and mysterious sound, all yeah. that stuff. You could do that if you yeah. had an augmented reality Which, app. By the way, there's an AI app that allows you, you can input um, descriptions and it'll produce a picture. And people have done that with the Ezekiel vision. It's, oh, it's wild. It's cool. Oh, I have seen those. Yeah. yeah. It's it, wild. It, ask, it ask AI, what did the vision for Ezekiel yeah. look like? And it, and it produces it. It's mind blowing. I mean, there's no way to know if it's actually accurate, but uh-huh. it's still mind blowing. <laughs> Based on the yeah. description, that's what it could come up with. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I want to see what the, the elements of the tabernacle look like. Yeah. And you hold up your phone and you can see them in your room as though they were placed inside yeah. your own. Get a cool. size of the scale of the tabernacle. So you go outside in your backyard or your front yard and you hold up it's your just phone. It's right and there. There it is. There's, there's the size of the tabernacle. Yeah. That's all positive. I can cool. I can incredible. get with that'd be cool. I could see that in a in a class in a group yeah. setting on a Sunday morning. You show Home that and, and people just get a real sense of like, okay, this is all of a sudden feels pretty relevant now. Yeah. I can yeah. see this. I can scale this. I get a bigger picture yeah. of what's happening here. It's not just words on a page, and I've got a picture to go with it. Yeah, yeah. And we can go places that that don't exist anymore in time. But yeah. And because. again, in a matter of seconds, you yeah. can see what it looks like. Yeah. Mm. I see that as all positive. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of really hard to cool. see any drawbacks from that. Yeah. Yeah. With, with this version of augmented reality, I, such a vast topic that I'm sure we're missing parts of it that yeah. probably have drawbacks. And Someone at home is watching us and they're like, you they're forgot. Like, no, I promise you. <laughs> if you're thinking that, comment, comment. it. Yeah. Let us know. Because I, I can't really think of any drawbacks at this point i mean i'm sure to everything could be reality yeah, yeah. Uh, anything could be used for evil obviously yeah so yeah, um, absolutely not that we're here to try to put all that out there but yeah. you like uh, you know, augmented and you're like the serpent from the garden like <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. exactly and i you know i tried to think of okay bible verses related to this i i don't know i i get the idea that you're augmenting reality but i yeah. kind of think of this this one at least almost kind of like uh uh, drawings or photographs or illustrations. Yeah. Is there danger in that? Yeah. I guess it could, could be, be, could be used for evil for yeah. sure, exactly. but uh, could the, be used for good. Yeah. The format itself is not as dangerous exactly. as the user of the format. Exactly. So yep. uh, that's good. Augmented Absolutely. reality. Yep. All right. So for our next one, we have the interesting topic of virtual reality. All right. So not augmented, but virtual reality. There are different words. So, what is virtual reality? So virtual reality is, uh, you could say, the older brother to augmented reality, if you want to say it that way. Virtual right. reality is the side of... It's not the twisted uncle version. <laughs> I mean, it could be, all depending on how you want to see it. Okay. Um, it is the one that puts you in a completely different reality. So these are the kinds to where you are wearing some type of goggles or something over your eyes that will fully encompass everything Yeah. so that whenever you are then put into this virtual reality, you have no bearings on what reality. your reality is <laughs> here. Okay. So um, on the and, lower end, this is kind of like you go to the mall and here's this giant device sitting up there and you get into it and they take you on a roller coaster and it's moving all around in yeah. 4D. Just like the That's, similar, we'll just go and tell a story. When it, our family recently went to Great Wolf Lodge. It's like a, a fun family oh. party. <laughs> and they had a virtual reality uh, motorcycle race yes, where like, you could race two people at a time. And I was like, all right, Dad. Let's do let's do this. Went over there, got the goggles, put it on. Dad's on the other one right next to me. He has it on. And we're like, all right, let's go. We like select all the cars, select the track. And uh, it starts. And because it's just a video game, they, like, they have fans that blow up on you too. <laughs> and you start in the coolest way possible. You're on this ramp and you jump off and you fly like 200 feet and then you smack the ground. <laughs> so it just starts out. And Dad's like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> freaking out. 
We land on the ground. He tries to take the first turn. It's so disorienting if you're not used to it. Even like, I was very disoriented doing it. Yeah. And uh, and all I'm doing is sitting still and just leaning on the bike yeah. like this. <sighs> Dad rips off the headset halfway through and he's like, I can't do this. I couldn't do it. <laughs> I, I don't I don't like roller coasters or anything like that. I don't care for speed or heights or any of that. It felt so real. It engaged wow. every, like, every every element sense. of my senses. Yeah. And this is Great Wolf Lodge arcade for kids. Yeah. That was like three dollars to ride is computer graphics this is nothing yeah. I'm, I'm saying there's nothing compared to like what's out the there today reality, that you can spend reality. two thousand dollars on to get yeah. into a virtual reality for something else yeah it's yeah. also the classic video of some family at home where they've put you yes. know some oh, vr yeah. goggles every on christmas Granddad. year there's a fail about this yeah and he's you know he's going oh you yeah. know and he falls down or whatever yeah it's Scared that, that same kind of deal yep. you're, yes. you're putting yourself into All right, right there those are the drawbacks Next. No. <laughs> <laughs> you are putting yourself into a reality reality that's not real yeah but it feels very real oh, it feels I, so that real. incredibly it was incredibly real for me on that motorcycle and I, I i did i jumped off and i said here someone else take this i cannot do this yeah it felt luckily so real brooke to took me. over and, and finished she the did race. thank yeah. you very much <laughs> so you get put into this virtual uh, uh not real reality yeah but you hear the sounds you see the sights you're moving through the space and, and now, in some cases, you actually get to interact with people, though, in some yeah. of these virtual realities. Oh, yeah, because right? it's other people who want to join into virtual reality. And mm -hmm. so then if you're doing that, might as well own the word reality and make your own reality. Yeah. And there are towns, villages, cities, yeah. gatherings, however yeah. you want to put it, all happening in virtual reality right yeah. now at, at this very second yeah. yeah. So this is real. This is not future Absolutely. tech. This no. is this is current. This is tech. right now, and yeah. even you could say old a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's yeah. true. This is this is not yeah. as fresh. Yeah. So right. what are some of the positives to virtual reality? Well, again, if we're looking at it from the church side, a comedic side though, and watching your family member get stressed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's not on the church side yet. Yeah. No. Uh, on the church side, again, I could see. Okay, I, I want to see the temple uh, built by Solomon. I want to move through that thing. Okay, put on these VR goggles and yeah. get into this experience right here. Yeah. And, and you and literally can, see the way how he worshiped God by building that temple, yeah, like I the could, intricate design. I can move through it and I can see the size, the scale, the stone, the gold. Yeah. I get a sense of the, the, the majesty of it. I get a sense of, of moving through it. I could even potentially interact with Solomon as I'm moving through it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or, or seeing like uh, Moses part the sea, like yeah, all of those exactly. like, like yeah. incredible miracles of the Old yeah. Testament, being yeah. able to see a yeah. rendering of what that was like would be breathtaking. Yeah, if someone yeah. created that, I could move through it. Yeah, if someone created that of, of Noah building the ark, I, I could I could interact with it, and I could be in the moment and turn and look up and down yeah. and around and, and just feel. Hope you don't have like the the smell one as <laughs> yeah. like all the animals yeah. in the ark. Yeah, exactly. I, I could be with Peter as he's stepping out of the boat to go walk to Jesus on the water. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I, all of that could be created, and I could move through it. I, I, that's a that's a good virtual reality. I'm going yeah. to places that I would like to go yeah. for the benefit of, of my faith and, yeah. and, and my life. That could be a good thing. Yeah, yeah. it grows you. Yeah, I, I could see. Um, could change you. You know, again, I'm not one to fly, and so I could see going to the Holy Land. Here's my way to go to the Holy Land. Yeah, yeah. I can virtually sure move through, through it, yeah. uh, the cities where where Paul walked. I could walk see where, where Jesus where was Jesus crucified. Walked. I could yeah. go to Golgotha. I could exactly. all of that, and and feel as though I was there. Yeah, not on a fast motorcycle. <laughs> So speeding through, yeah, <laughs> exactly. I could see that. Those are all positives. Yeah, uh, yeah. For sure. I could see if it was somebody who uh, could not afford to go, did not like to go, uh, was not physically capable of going. Yeah, but by putting on some goggles, they could go. Uh, that's all. Seems positive. And to like me. I, I believe there's a company out there that's got to be working on this, and I think that's going to be amazing whenever they finish it because there are so many. Uh, churches out there that would love to go and see all of this and they just they can't like they don't have the funds to do it they don't have the time to do it they don't yeah. have the resources to do it and so being able to see uh, literal biblical places in the most mm -hmm. accurate sense would be breathtaking yeah, yeah sure if it brings all that to life why not yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and on the positives just something to be aware of though like the 
newer generations will be raised where they won't question this the same way we're questioning it. We're like, this is a new thing. We're like, eh, it's kind of weird. I don't know if I'll get into it. Yeah. But I mean, like my kids will be raised where so much of this is already the norm. And yeah. so if there is a group of kids who are there, they still need to be reached and they still need to be ministered to. Yeah. That doesn't mean that the church has to completely close all of its doors and be like, we're only metaverse now. And like, that's it. Yeah. Right. But that means so there is a new culture that will be created inside um, any type of virtual reality and they will need to be reached. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's talk about some drawbacks. Yeah. There's got to be some potential drawbacks to some of this, right? So, totally. Sure. I mean, I think the number one easiest thing that probably everyone's thinking watching this is, well, why, what about the person that is going to get involved in this and is going to get totally lost in this? Yes. He's gonna, is going to use this as, they think this is actually their life. You know, right. if they think this is their life, then, I mean, that's dangerous, wouldn't you think? You know, wouldn't you think that, you know, hey, that's not really what God would want, all those kinds of thoughts. Yeah, that they could get lost in yeah. this reality that's not reality. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, I I've could, listened to several podcasts about this too, and they talk about like, at what point do you just determine that a person is just a, a brain in a tank and they're just a yeah. brain tank and that's it. Exactly. And then you treat how the brain how you want and then that's yeah. it. Yeah. Think, Where it becomes an escape from reality. It's exactly. an escape from, you know, dealing with real people in yeah. the real world and reconciliation and forgiveness and understanding and all those kind of things. For sure. I could see. I mean, we already know video games are that for people. Yeah. Yeah. Movies, exactly. entertainment are that for people. Yeah. Social media. Social yes. media. And escapism for Phones people. Phones yeah. in general. <laughs> and so now you you employ a method that engages all of the senses and even has yeah. more of a euphoric more feel so. to yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, becomes something of much greater yeah. uh, potential to get lost in. Exactly. And, and, and caught up in. I, I get all that. For so. sure. And yeah. it's just totally, I think it, it really makes you call into question what, where do you draw the line? Cause you're like, Oh, well that's so bad. Virtuality and all that kind of stuff. It's like, yeah. to what degree are we already partaking in this, this is, kind of stuff? This is your virtual reality. That you're <laughs> living in right now. Exactly. So yeah. Like there is already a digital version of you out there on the internet and you're yeah. the one who is becoming that every time you go to your phone. Yeah. And yeah. so I think, you know, to some degree we ought to consider before just saying, Oh, that way out there is so bad. Well, virtuality is already here. You know, it's already been here. And to some degree, everyone's involved in it yes. with phones, you know? Yeah. And so as you're making your judgment of, do I agree? Do I disagree? What should we think about this? You know, have that in yeah. mind. So what what is the biblical stance then to virtual reality? Yeah, so uh, we know of passages uh, like Ephesians where it talks about, uh, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the spirit. Mm -hmm. This is not wine. What are you talking about? Well, the reason we're called to be uh, not drunk with wine is because we are taught to be filled with the Spirit, we're to be yeah. fully immersed yeah. and engaged with what God has for us yeah. and not look for escape in things like alcohol because alcohol provides an escape. It provides its own a, reality. A, a yeah. reality that's not real. Yes, exactly. So I get... Um, I see life differently. I behave differently. I become someone I'm not. I'm more funny. I'm more whatever, outgoing. Yeah. Helps dull my pain. Those are all virtual realities that are not real. And you never want anyone to, to get into that, live into that, because you end up making decisions in that safe. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so I real. think the same is true here. You don't want to get caught up in escapism and uh, go to places and become something that you are not. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. There's no, there's no real life and faith in that. And, yeah. and like, that's a check too, though. Even like, it's very easy to be like, yeah, man, those virtual reality people just use that as escapism. And yeah. like, that's <laughs> it. But it's like, man, there's so many times I turn to my phone for escapism and it's yeah, like, I or, need to be aware. And like, people do that in a movie. I'm going to get lost yeah. in this TV yeah. series. I get caught yeah. up in these characters and yes. think about these characters all the time. And yeah. Same, yeah. same principles. So, it goes back to uh, all of the things in which we're discussing are not inherently evil. The things that, that we do and see are not inherently evil, but it's the way in which we use them, in which we interact with them, in which the heart behind each of these things, that's yeah. what yeah. truly is the matter. You know? Yeah. Uh, the reality of life is it, it's messy. It, calls sacri it requires sacrifice. Yeah. It requires patience and understanding and time and virtual reality kind of robs us of all of that. Yep. And so 
Jesus in the New Testament, First John, it talks about lo- love one another. Yeah. You can't do that in in fake worlds. Yeah, you, yeah. you can't do that in places that are not reality. You have to do that in places where people are messy and require exactly. understanding and patience. So. Absolutely. Yeah, the coolest point about virtual reality is you still get to feel like Neo from the Matrix and like go in and save people the whole time. <laughs> exactly. like you're like called like you need to unplug. Like you can use all those references and yeah. it's actual legit at that point. Yeah, so. absolutely. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So for this next one, it's kind of a combination between uh, between what we just talked about, the virtual reality, augmented reality. But this one is the meta experience. All right. So the meta verse, um, the meta you name it, all the mm-hmm, stuff. Mm-hmm. Hunter, would you like to explain what meta really is? Yeah. Uh, so briefly, uh, meta is Facebook for anyone who's curious. It's just that Facebook is now rebranded as meta right now. So like meta technically owns Facebook in case anyone's curious. Mm-hmm. And Instagram and some other companies. Yes. Yeah. Um, a lot of large social media companies they, they own. Um, so meta is what the right now at this time is the turning point to where the goal is to shift everyone to instead of just let me scroll on my phone to to read what's going on it's more so of let me join into a meta experience that via virtual reality and let me live my life that way and be constantly plugged into social media which yeah. just shows a whole lot about the culture today is a lot of people are either too sad, upset with their current reality yeah. and they don't find any way to where they want to change it. They want to find their escapism. And if their escapism is in social media and this company says, hey, we'll spend billions of dollars to make the perfect escapism. You can do whatever you want. You can be whatever you want. Just come join us. Yeah. yeah. That's essentially what meta is. <clears throat> so yeah. the, from what I understand, the difference between meta and say augmented reality is in meta, I get to create the kind of person that I want to be in this reality. Yes. I you can, can be you. You could look exactly I like you. I can be me. I can look like me, sound like me, be me, but I could also recreate myself yes. as anyone else. I could. You could be this coffee cup right here. If you want to. <laughs> Literally. I could be a coffee cup. I could be an animal. I can choose my gender. I can choose my height. I can choose my race. I can choose anything about me. Yeah and then present myself as that in that reality. And no one out there would know anything different about me than what they saw. Correct. Right. So I can interact in this reality, this augmented reality, but I'm interacting as a person of my choice. Correct. At this point. And which means everybody else I'm interacting with, I have no clue whether that's what they are or not. Correct. If they're a coffee cup, I probably know that's not them. (laughs) Yeah. But I have no way of knowing anyone out there is who they really say they are. Yeah, yeah. They are the uh, icon, or they are the they are the the electronic skin they've chosen yeah. in that moment for that time. Yep. So, absolutely. and then everyone then is encouraged to move about and relate and live in this environment. So, there's like real estate that you can purchase out in the meta yeah, it's, metaverse. Yeah, it's so right. Yeah. Yes. Even it though is. it's not a real place. Yep. You can, you can buy property. You, you can, can take own. up locations and property and, and, yep. and own it out there as real estate. Which it just shows though, that already so much of like, you know, so much of it is pitched as this escapism that you can join into of being like, no, make your reality, whatever you want. You can be happy here, make it whatever you want. Mm. And then there's already this aspect of like, no, but here's where like the fancier people sit in the metaverse. Here's where these <laughs> yeah. people really are here. Here's where these people are here. And if you don't really like that, then like you really need to go over here. And it's just creating its whole entire world of yeah, just, yeah. just a recreation of the same world. It is. Just with a different exactly. skin. But you can be a coffee cup. So yeah. it's kind of, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So yeah. that, that's weird. That's a little bit harder. I mean, all of these, each one gets a little bit harder to wrap your mind yeah, around. This sure. one is just like, okay, this is this is ultimate escapism, really. Yeah. Yes. This is me in my recliner never getting up, but yet going everywhere as someone I am not. Yes. Yeah. Potentially. Yes. Yep. If you really want to watch a movie about it, Ready Player One basically is, is uh, a, it's a, it's a story. It's a, like a movie, but it's yeah. basically this played out in real life. Yeah. You see, well, and you go back craziness. to the matrix. Uh, exactly. Kind of what's yeah. happening there. People yeah. against their will were being 
uh, enslaved and they were, their brain was plugged in and they mm-hmm. thought they were living a reality when they were really yeah. not. They were held in, in st- instead in a tank. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, and I still think the worst mindless. is like whenever the metaverse first came out, there were companies that jumped into it. Like uh, Subway was one of them. And so people were <laughs> having to join the metaverse and then apply for jobs at Subway. Oh. It would work at Subway inside the metaverse. Oh. And it was just like, this isn't the reality you should be searching for. Yeah. This like, That's you're ridiculous. destined for way more than this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, and then you have even churches out there in the metaverse. Oh, yeah. yeah. Set up their it open. church services and church experience. I yeah. hear these people moving into these church spaces yep. for a church presentation of a speaker yeah. and music and, and all of these metaverse people. Characters. In in the space. Yeah, I saw one. They still had like greeters outside the door. People were walking in there like, <laughs> oh, welcome to Metaverse. <laughs> oh, that is so interesting. Yeah. All, All right. right. So what are some of the positives, if there are any positives, to the meta experience? Okay. What would y'all say? Yeah, I, I had to really think on this Dig one. Dig deep. It, it's a lot because yeah. I, I can see, all right, um, maybe if there were people in other countries – who could not have the gospel brought to them because of political, governmental yep. boundaries, but they got into they the, the metaverse, metaverse yeah. and for some reason the government there did not limit it there, then I could enter into the metaverse yeah. and develop a relationship with them, yeah. uh, live out my faith before them, share the gospel with them, and make disciples from them. Now that's a whole lot of supposing <laughs> and if Sounds like about five years worth of metaverse life right there. <laughs> In order to, yeah. yeah, all the while ignoring the people who are right around me. Exactly. So. Yeah, exactly. Saying, that's that's the really tough part. It's like there's there are so there that's not so many pros. There are so many ways the metaverse can affect uh, your reality, and there could be a lot of good that comes from that. It just more shows the sad reality of escapism, though, that people now have of yeah. like. If they want to find joy, there's no way they can create it here. There's no way they can find it in their life. So maybe they'll find it in a virtual reality. Yeah. All of this still just screams to me broken. that, yeah, it's a <laughs> broken world and that the message of the gospel is still the most truth, yeah. uh, just truth to everyone's life out yeah, there. That exactly. all of this shows that people are broken and they know that they're broken and they know that they can find if they if they want to find happiness somewhere else because they know that yeah. their life circumstances just how it is sucks. Yeah. And like, that's the most reality right there. Yeah. So meta should be like a huge reminder that uh, it's frustrating that businesses are making billions of dollars trying to offer fake happiness to someone. Whenever the church yeah. has the true happiness and yep. the true answer right here. And we can't pull people together to be like, look, this, like just come here and like <laughs> learn, Let's study together. Let's yeah. learn this together. Here's yeah. the answer. For sure. Let's go the other direction, though. Let's assume there was someone, or, or imagine there was someone who was disabled, that physically could not move yes. about, um, but they had all of their mental faculties, but they wanted to be able to experience movement and places to go and places to yes. see, but were not physically able, either because of disability or because of age, even, yeah. or some other health uh, factor. Could this not give them the ability to experience greater life and go to places they could never go, experience things they could never experience, see things they could never see? Yeah. Well, again, there's there's so many pros and cons of that because then you can have it to where, like, um, I'm not going to try to sound mean saying this, but I'm just going to say it. Uh, like, if, if, Ad, if my daughter wanted to play with uh, anyone who's older than, like, 70 or 80 years old she could play and if it's like a trusted like family thing and everything like that they could be seen as like the same age and hang out and there wouldn't be this kind of like oh you're older you're not able to do as much as i can because i'm i'm at this stage of my life like there's so many different types of like bonds of relationships that you can get that would be totally different yes these are so like out there there. but the thing is is this is still a reality that some people could live in Yeah, it's, so and she it's, had a, and it brings them to that. If she had a relative that lived in another state, yes, that, and exactly. they were able to interact, yeah, that yeah. way, all of that, and like, and they could they could play with like to their imagination's content, yeah. and even 
past what their imagination yeah. can even comprehend. Yeah. And, and surely people, it'd be better than FaceTime, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. FaceTime. And people may be like, oh, well, that sounds so ridiculous. Well, it happens every day with people who play Call of Duty, people who play That's whatever true. video yeah. game. Well, guess what? That's I'm playing true. with a guy who's from whatever state and this yep. state and another yep. in a different country. But yeah. we're all playing at the same time on just one game, but you can interact as an avatar with another avatar. Yeah. All this kind of stuff. Is it? Is it the best thing in the world? No. Yeah. No. Sh- that should be seen as entertainment, not yeah. a lifestyle. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Just going to watch it. It has a potential addition to life, but should ever be the escape for life or yes. from life. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Supplement, okay. but not the protein. Not substitute. There you go. Worth it. Cool. Dang. That works too. All right. So, uh, any other biblical verses, biblical stance that uh, we ought to be informed about? As I we're mean, I, 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 about this I don't think Jesus ever like mentioned the Sermon on the Mount. Like as he's walking off, and he's like, "Also, the metaverse is really not the best idea." Yeah. <laughs> like we can't find that reference in there. Yeah. But um, I really just feel like the escapism is so much of just what all of this is. I mean, social media uh, is so much of what the escapism is today, yeah. and it's really easy to point to where even like social media people have their own camps like people are like oh i'm on tiktok i'm on instagram reels exactly. well like well i'm snapchat and facebook's for boomers and this is for this and this is right. for that. and it's it's very easy to kind of point the finger of being like well, y'all are the weirdos so y'all are the this one <laughs> yeah but it's like we all uh use this as escapism and that's very dangerous for our life and we should be aware of this <laughs> like that should be the biggest thing that we say yeah absolutely well the other thing very i know good. is that uh, faith and even discipleship Growing and learning in our life. I think everybody would say this, that the people who have had the most profound impact on their life was someone that they knew as flesh and blood. Yes. We all read great authors. We all maybe have watched videos of certain people. But the ones I think at the end of our life who will say, this person impacted me the most was not going to be necessarily an author you read or a video you watched. Could be, but most often it's going to be someone who is flesh and blood. I think this... Uh, it comes back again to the New Testament. You find Old Testament as well, but especially the New Testament, we see this idea that um, faith is transmitted over relationships. It comes out of that. And yeah. Our church was called to meet uh, together. They weren't to forsake their assembling together. Uh, it wasn't enough just to send a letter around. They were encouraged to meet together. Yeah. Um, the Jesus uh, says that he was one who was who was touched with all uh, frailties as we were, yet without sin. Um, and we have a high priest now in heaven who, who we can come to because he had flesh and blood like us. So, so much of faith is in the reality uh, of people, relationships, and the meta potentially can aid with that, but there's so many more potentials for escape yeah. in that. And I really so, feel like so. just before we go to this next point, yeah. Um, a big thing with this is slowly over this even goes back to the chat GPT. We're becoming more of a consumer mindset yeah. of just yeah. how does this benefit me and then me nope. and then me yeah. and then me. Yep. And as a consumer, you're never able to assist or help anyone else. That's yeah. true. Being able to take stuff and then shift it so that you can become a giver instead of a consumer is such a mental spiritual shift that has to happen that is so tough because everything, not everything, so much of everything in this world today is on the consumer side. Yeah. And I think of that as the metaverse. Like we talk so much about um, how you can go in there and be whatever you want, go wherever you want, yeah, everything right. like that. But I mean, with a lot of that, you're not able to give to anything or give to anyone. And that is such a huge part of what Jesus commands us to do and demonstrate so well. He didn't just show up when he was like, the secret to infinite food is actually just praying this way and sit at home and do nothing. Yeah, exactly. Like there was no parts of that. Yeah. And so it's yeah. all about like how to give and how to teach. It's it's really good. true. Yep. It's good stuff. stuff. Love it. All right. So for this last one, all right, most intense one, you thought, this wow. This is the heavy debatable The one. first one was so crazy and then it got crazier. Well, get ready. This last one that we're talking about is Neuralink. All right. Neuralink. Most people probably have not heard of this stuff. If you know who Elon Musk is, you probably know who the, what this is. Uh, but Hunter, would you like to describe what Neuralink is? Yeah, so Neuralink is, and at this point in this conversation, I'm going to need Truett or Dad just to cut me off because I, <laughs> I could go another two hours on this one. Um, 
Neuralink is a company that Elon Musk made that essentially uh, is a computer chip that will go into your brain. Mm-hmm. That you, that we'll just pause at that first. Yeah, <laughs> just <laughs> take that chip in. that oh, can go <laughs> into your brain. Yes, um, and it neural link right it goes into your brain and there's that connection there and changes are supposed to take place with it being in your brain correct but yes. what is what's the purpose of it what are the actions of a neural link so at this point it is early in its development and it has been tested on animals has not been tested on a human yet um as of this recording <laughs> and so um this shows anything with a digital interface you can control it if you have the neural link in your brain. As in phones and computers? And- yes. There's a very popular video that they put out of a monkey that can play Pong um, by itself with its brain and beat the computer all by its brain. So it is just by thinking it is controlling a device. Yes. So that's what the implanted chip or interface would yeah. do in me. Give me the ability to interact with the device. And if you listen like their their company presentations and things like that, like it starts out where Elon Musk just says, uh, our goal today is really just to show how the brain is just a huge point of just ins and outs. And we just need to uh, properly label where all the ins are and where all the out, all the inputs are and all the outputs are. And then from there, we can really uh, rewire it to do whatever we want. There's parts of saying... <laughs> Um, if someone had a stroke and all of a sudden then it cut out their ability to move their, their left arm, well, if, if all that stroke was was just some kind of like piece in their brain, a piece in their brain, well, then all you have to do is just really just jump across some other pathways. And then you can re get connection into your arm. And yeah. then there's no like, hey, let me reteach you how to do this because it's just your brain thinking, well, this is how yeah. your arm's supposed to move. So it's just like, and then you can move your arm again. So by simply implanting the chip, it would restore back to natural existence as you were before, potentially. Yes. This hasn't happened yet. It hasn't happened yet. It's in theory. But it's all in theory, and it is all, it's, and it's not even like this huge surgery. It's like you'll go in for a a day, even half a day. I think it's got a couple hours. They don't even put you under, and um, they put it into your brain. Slice your brain open. So all the potentials, (laughs) again, this is all potential. Yes. We've saved this one to the end. It's potential, but but it is also like, it's a reality already because they're showing it's already in animals. Yeah. We're just saying potential because it hasn't been in a human yet. Yeah. Yeah. But But all of this. 2023, Yes. End of 2023, it's going to be in a human. They've said this is going to be tested on a human being. So for a person who had some kind of injury and can no longer walk but the injury is more related to their brain than it is their body. Again, yeah. some kind of interface could be put into their brain yeah. and they would, they would then know how to control their legs. Yes. And they or could, even let's just say like their leg got infected with something and they had to get like their leg amputated. Well, then they could get a new prosthetic leg that has where it's computer controlled. And then that links and syncs up to the neural link. And then, they just have to send the same brain commands as you to walk your walk that you normally uh, would that you would normally use just straight to that leg and you would walk like normal. There would be no years of physical therapy of like I need to learn how to control this and work with it. It would just be like they put it on there like you you're good to go now. Let's test wow. it out and you'd be fine. So someone who has lost the ability to communicate uh, verbally, yes, same thing. Yes, someone who lost sight, same potentially thing. same thing. Yes, uh, colorblind. Fix it. Any, yes. any any disability, any tragic happening. could either be fixed if it's if it's brain wise or could be added to any other parts of them. Like I talked about, like if something was wrong with their leg, they could be given another just robotic leg and could be controlled by the brain instead. Million dollar yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so I guess that would mean potentially then I could also control other devices with my brain. Yeah. So like if you're sitting here and like your phone rang. You could just answer it with your brain or, <laughs> or or like the weirder thing, just circling back to the beginning of the podcast, That's the was if you were like, this up. I need to like quickly learn chat GPT is the best way to say this. You would just use your brain to open up the internet on your phone and do chat And GPT, you're just reading. And then it comes back to you and then you read it. I mean, that's the entire part of, like I said, though, of the consumer side of at that point, like it's not even like, hey, Let's take a, a speech therapy class or like a Toastmasters class and learn how to like speak really well. It's like, 
all of that's there. Yeah. I want to speak German. Done. done. Download and done. Yeah. Matrix. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the matrix. Again, it comes back yeah. to that. I, I Karate, need to learn how to done. fly a helicopter. Give me just one second. Okay. I'm ready. Yeah. You know, literally <laughs> one second. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, so that, then that's the all, positives? it's all theory though. <laughs> it is all theory. It's theory, but, but, but very, very close. <laughs> yeah. Likely, uh, because some of the things I read, theory. it's like, okay, uh, let's say you want to put this chip in and you want to help a soldier on the battlefield suppress any fear or anxiety he has. Done. And you do that, and now he's ready. Uh, he doesn't have to. <laughs> he doesn't like have that. to have the training. He just needs the chip. Yeah. Well, and then like courageous. The other question too is like even like we all know that whenever you use adrenaline, like you can tap into some superhuman strength. Like there's like documentations of moms flipping over cars that their kids were right. locked in during some like right. wreck, and so. At that point, like, when do you say, like, I want to work out more? Like, let me load 5% adrenaline into this. And you just, like, you do everything. Shred all your muscles. Okay. Yeah. So those are all the potential benefits. Potential positives. Yeah, obviously, there's no negatives with this. Oh, <laughs> man. So let's go to the, if that's potential positives, what are the potential drawbacks? How about that? Just if this thing does actually happen. Jesus does not come back before then. Yeah. yeah. Um, the potential draw. I'll go and just start with this, though. Um, potential drawbacks is... Uh, <laughs> you name it. Uh, it's hard yeah, you name it. Because uh, it could be like this device has to be charged. And so what happens if you're going about your day and like in the battery life yeah. isn't as good? You've got all prosthetic limbs. Yeah. And then next thing you know, are you Iron your, your Man? Dies. Just, like, your battery dies and you're just stuck in like this iron yeah. suit. Or you're, you're like, driving down the go. highway with five people in your car. Well, and you're yeah. riding in your Tesla probably at that oh, point. Oh, true. So yeah. It doesn't matter. You're flying safe. across town. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so it really yeah. is just great point. Uh, your heart is, is being kept up by your brain and then your neural link dies. Yeah. And, then- and I'm sure all of this has been discussed in way fancier meetings when yeah. we're doing this podcast. Like there's not to where like someone we're points it out and they're like, yeah, or like, here, <laughs> Elon yeah. like, Musk is going to listen to this and be like, ah, oh, we forgot about that. he's like, cancel it. Yeah. yeah. There's too many, it's probably not going to happen, but, um, it, it is just crazy. I mean, there's talks of like, if someone can cyber hack into it, then what can they make you do? Exactly. And yeah. like we said, what happens if all of a sudden the battery life is low? What do you do if that happens? Um, yeah. And then what, what is it once it's turned over to the free market in a sense? Why like, is it only that metaverse is able to say what you can do or can like, can some guy in his garage be like, Hey, I found out you can do this. And like, Grow your fingers further. Or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> or, or anything. It just gets yeah. to where like, who knows? And I think a lot of this is all just very interesting from all of these discussions of these multiple yeah, pages sure. of like our culture is changing so fast and rapidly yeah. moving to things. And all of it though still describes to me how hungry the culture is to, to get a grip on something new because they don't like how their life is yeah. so yeah. bland and so empty and so depressed. They want to find something that takes them out of their standard reality, out of yeah. their standard self, so that they can feel like they're something greater. Yeah. They're all this is all a search for that hole in your heart. Yeah. Yeah. And exactly. so it's just it's sad to see literally the billions and billions of dollars, the trillions of dollars and the billions of hours that are dumped into all of this. Yeah. That like we need to wave the banner so high of being like, guys, we have the answer. Exactly. Yeah. 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 There, there is this idea again, like you said with some of these others, that the the danger is in the person, the user, and the yes. creator, uh, yes. more than the technology itself. This one, yeah, I don't know, it starts to cross a few boundaries because it yeah. gets inside me and yeah. has potential to control me. I think, and this is where for me, I'd have the greatest concern is that God has created us to be able to exist with freedom. Yes. And a free God-given will. Right. Okay. I recognize the sovereignty of God, but I'm okay with the sovereignty of God and free will both at existing the at the same time. Yeah. And and that's where we're called to live. And so anything that upends my freedom in Christ and my freedom as an individual, I get a little nervous about. Yeah. If somebody wants to, you know, control things about me. I get a little nervous about that. I understand there's a need for laws and those kind of things, but uh, a law about how to the drive down the road is not the same as someone else forcing me to drive down the road. Yeah. So uh, I want to, at the end of the day, still have my free will. I still want to yeah. be able to choose what happens. 
Now, if some kind of neural link helps me to choose to want to use my prosthetic leg, that's a great thing. Exactly. But if someone along the way has the ability to control what goes into that chip inside me, and there, there's all of a sudden a change in the culture, and they say, oh, well, um, you're not going to be able to regain use of your leg unless you follow these government protocols yeah. about health and vaccinations. Exactly. Okay, now now we just cross the line again. Yeah. You know, yeah. You're wanting to exactly. control Again, what I don't want to do, I'm losing my freedoms. Yeah. And you, see, you see a lot of that happening in China today yeah. where people are not given access to drive on certain highways unless they have kept up with certain health mandates by yeah. the state given to them. Yeah. See, hopefully this- it's just like you have the neural link and then they say like an- <clears throat> COVID's out again and you just like turn up your immunity in your body. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. It is like Easy. <laughs> done. Yeah. 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 So anything that, that limits my free will to choose yeah. to me is dangerous. Yeah, and, for sure. And yeah. if you, you're going to start taking control of my thoughts and my actions and my movements. Well, and again, and then that's the danger. Then if, if that's so aware that that's something though, yeah. that, that if that precedence is already there and then someone signs up for it, that's the ultimate escapism. That's them yeah. saying, I literally don't even want to make any more decisions for my life. Someone please do this. I'll just abide that whatever you want. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Well, and I'm not saying that this is the mark of the beast, but I'm going to use a reference from scripture about this. Every time. So, <laughs> Everyone's already thinking it. They're already thinking. Let me just go ahead and say it. We know from Revelation it. 13. I'm not saying this is the mark of the beast. But yes. I want, hear, hear me out. Revelation 13, verse 16, 17. He causes all, referring to... The Antichrist. the Antichrist. He causes all, both great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand and their foreheads that no one may buy or sell yeah. except one who has the mark all, or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So, again, I'm not saying this is that. Yeah. But what, sets the precedence. But what That's this true. is here in this Revelation 13 passage is, is someone who is exercising complete control yes. over every person in the culture. They chose escapism and they gave up on their entire like. Yeah. And he, this one is controlling everybody's ability to move about. I don't want anything to do with that. I, I, I want my freedoms Yeah, uh, and whatever they might be within my home and, and my land. And so that's where I get a little bit nervous about the neural link because now there's something going in my body that I may not even have the control over anymore. Yeah. And if that were to be the case, I would see that as highly dangerous because it's only as valuable as the person who's pushing the buttons for it at that point. Yeah. Now yeah. there are other things like people still have pacemakers in their body and there that's are true. other things like that. So like this isn't the first new age You're right. tech thing that's going in. You're right. There are, just, this is the first one that openly said, and we're we going could to put this in your brain and like, you. who knows what we find out? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we all probably know someone who has a pain management system in their body. That, exactly. That's, that's electronically uh, controlling the amount of comfort they have because they once had pain there in their, yes. in their yeah. body. Yes. So you're right. That stuff is in place, whether it's pacemaker or pain management systems of, of any kind like that. Yeah. Um, again, the ability to maintain control is the big deal. Mm-hmm. Right? I, I think is, is where we, we want to land on all. So yeah, I think I do think some of the other questions, at least that people will start having is, is, and I hope people start asking the question is this, the idea of like, what, what is man? What is a man? What is a woman? What, what is life? What is my purpose? If this is ahead of us, what, what do I think about this? Where do I, where do I stand on, on God given rights? Where do I stand on, um, what purpose even is really, yep. you know, I, yep. I think those questions ought to be asked whenever these get brought up, not just like, Oh, is Neuralink good or bad? But like, what does this do to a society? Does this, mm-hmm. does this help people to see God or does this help people just feed their appetites? Does this help people? Uh, does it help people in general? Yeah. You know, is, yeah. it, is it, is it good for humans? Or is this something that's detrimental to you? Yeah, because if everybody in charge of this, if I knew them and trusted them as people who were out for my best interest and the yeah. glory of God, say, okay. But just think, there. like, if the entire church had this, there'd be no reason to, like, <laughs> put words on the screen anymore. <laughs> And no, hymnals. You'd automatically know all the worship songs. <laughs> they would all sing on Everyone key. can sing on key. Like, yeah. It would all be <laughs> clap on time. That's what I'm saying. On the church tech side, it's like, let's put this in the entire body of no, Christ. No, <laughs> no. Terrible. 
There's beauty in the diversity. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, beauty exactly. And, and even our, our needs within the body. Yeah. Every, yes. every member doing its own parts. Exactly. And dependent upon one another. Yes. That's so. right. Again, I would say, like, back to the mental things that Neuralink can correct, we'll say. Like, oh, it can suppress anger. It can suppress anxiety. All that stuff. Okay. Yeah. But what if that anger and anxiety is there for a reason? What if yeah. it's directing you towards God to... Okay, I'm angry at a situation. I'm not just going to like think, okay, I need less of the angry emotion, yep. whatever kind of yeah. thing. I don't know how it works. And if it's teaching you to whenever you feel any of those feelings that like, yeah. oh, this is bad, this is evil, like yeah. oh, I need Here's to suppress answer. this instantly, yeah. and then yeah. you're dependent on something yeah. else to suppress it. Then- that's where it goes back to, you are a <laughs> robot, you are not human, yes. if that's the case. Yeah, and there's a de- no dependence on God. There's no, no. sense of uh, crucifying my flesh, so I yep. can know the power of the resurrection, all of that exactly. kind of stuff. It's so in, It's entirely robot, me, consumer. Yep. I'll, I'll understand everything. I... I have all the knowledge and Neuralink, chat GPT, whatever you want to say. I have all, Yeah. I have eaten from the tree basically at that point. And That's I have true. all the knowledge of good and evil. Exactly. I'm solved. I'm good. I don't I can, need anyone I don't need, else. I don't need God. I'm totally sufficient on my own. I don't need miracles. I don't Ooh, need healing. I'm all the way back to the man. But my, I'm Come just saying now. though, is like a lot of that though, is like we see the tech of it. I'm just saying there's a lot of people who are already living their lives like that. Exactly. Now. Yeah. You just say, and that's sad. no, I will take the knowledge of good and evil myself. I'll yeah. determine it. I don't need that. I don't need that. I'll take these pills. I'll take this substance. Yeah. I'll do this in my life. And yeah. I don't need anyone. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully this conversation brings about some questions, thoughts, ideas in your head where you say, hey, I disagree with that. But then you observe maybe somewhere else in your own life where you say, whoa, hold on. I think oh, yeah. that's actually me in a different <laughs> way. You yeah. know, I, I definitely see that in a, in a lot of these things, you know, for myself. And so yeah. it's good. Yeah. I think bottom line, Jesus came so that we could have life. Yes. And life abundant. So how and do you it, define life? And it is. <laughs> yeah. It, it's yeah. in him. And uh, he came for us to be free, not to be enslaved. He came mm-hmm. for us to walk with him, which is a process. It's not a download. It's a process of yeah. walking with him. And he puts us within a body, which is a church, who have different people within it and relationships. And we share, and I have need, and I have supply. And that's all connected together. Uh, we're called to admission to set other people free, not to enslave uh, but to set them free, to know the glory of God, to walk in vertical life. And this is what our calling is, to make disciples, yeah. uh, those who are connected to the same kind of freedom. So fascinating subject. Yeah, good fascinating stuff. Fascinating day we live. Uh, one that the church must ask themselves. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Take stances. What are we going to do? Yeah. Who yeah. are we? What is life? And where is the line? What will we use for the kingdom's sake? And what will we draw the line and say, not here? And maybe years from now, someone who has a neural link will like sit down this podcast. We'll interview oh, them. There you Not go. That it's going to be one of us. <laughs> right. We'll bring someone in. All right. Well, I appreciate so, Hunter joining us today. Yes, we, don't, we don't get to have him here always, but uh, we're glad he is here today. And I yeah. uh, hope it's been helpful to you. We'd love to hear your thoughts on the conversation. Feel free to comment, like, subscribe, and mm-hmm. share. And uh, join us as we keep lifting him up and living him out.